This year, it happened earlier. The phenomenon on the bike path of the jumping gulls. People compare them to Mexican jumping beans, but they are much, much smaller than the jumping bean. The speculation is they jump in order to lodge themselves more deeply into the leaf litter. A few unfortunate ones land on the asphalt of the green belt or bike path, which is bad for them because they're more likely to die of desiccation or predation there. But it's good for me because then I get to watch them. As is true with other oak galls, they originate from the egg-laying activity of a cinnabid wasp. The jumping gall is just one of several galls that result from insect larvae. You can learn about galls from nearly any book on oak trees. Here are the golf ball sized or larger galls with which we are more familiar. Here you can see how tiny the jumping gall is compared to the larger gall. I decided this year I would quantify them. So ignoring all the variables such as number of leaves, deflection from hitting other leaves or branches, and interception by webs, etc., I set a trap. My trap covered an area of approximately 15 square inches. I deployed the trap for three hours. I had a capture rate of near zero. Actually, I caught one. You can see it in the lower left corner here. A gall is about the size of the head of a pin. Here I'm going to use a skittle candy to represent a gall even though it is much, much larger than the gall. One gall in three hours. Eight galls in 24 hours. In one week, 56 galls. Now take into account the area under a mature oak tree. There could be as many as 9,184 galls per week. That was more Skittles than I was willing to buy. Hmm, once you start looking down, you never know what you're going to find on the bike path. Uh-oh. These poor buggers are caught in the spider web. Now then, from here on out, I hope you can appreciate tiny, tiny wildlife.